starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the stoop chair. This is the stoop chair that once belonged to Thomas Busby. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk, North Yorkshire, and wasn't known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. Like, a lot. In 1702, he found his father-in-law sitting in it, and it sparked an argument between the two of them. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, which is very 1702 of him, and that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house, and things escalated so far that Busby actually ended up killing his father-in-law, and then he went on to hide the body in the woods. Of course, the body ended up being found, and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to his execution, he has to stop by his favorite pub for a beer, and this request was fulfilled, which is also very 1702. Apparently, as he finished his drink, he said, quote, May sudden death come to anyone who dare sit in my chair. I really don't know what it is with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972, it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could sit in it again, which is probably for the best. In our number nine spot today, we have Annabelle. It's not just a movie, folks. There really is a very real doll that the tales have been inspired by. The doll now resides in the Warren's Occult museum where it absolutely belongs, but where did it come from? Well, there was once a college student named Donna who received the doll as a gift from her mother who had purchased it from an antique store. Donna and her roommate started to notice some pretty creepy things happening and swore that the doll was moving. They said it would appear in different places and positions throughout their apartment before things began to worsen. Donna began to find notes that said help in her apartment and one night she found the doll in a different position and covered in some sort of red substance. The girls then decided to contact a medium who solidified all of their beliefs and told them that the doll had been possessed by the spirit of someone who was killed in their apartment building. For some reason, the girls didn't immediately get rid of the doll, and the story goes that their friend Lou, who was at the girl's apartment, heard strange noises one night and went to investigate, and this is when he was attacked and killed by Annabelle. The girls finally contacted a priest who told them that the doll was possessed by a demon straight from hell, and then he put them in contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren, paranormal investigators. The two of them tried to do an exorcism on the doll, but it apparently failed, which is why it is now kept in a glass box at their museum. In our number 8 spot today, we have the goddess. This statue is actually called the goddess of death, or sometimes the woman from the Lem. This artifact is made out of limestone, and it was created sometime around 3500 BC, and it was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years, it has belonged to many different families who all have been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner, and after four years, death began to come to him and his family as well. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum, where it thankfully still resides, hopefully to never ruin another family again. In our number seven spot today, we have the Hope Diamond. The Hope Diamond was most likely cut from a mine in India and placed into a statue. It is a huge 45 carats and it has a beautiful rare blue color. It is one of the most famous diamonds in the world, partially for its beauty, but also because of all of the mysterious happenings surrounding it. One day a thief stole the diamond and is said to have died quite soon after. From then on, anyone who owned or even touched the diamond was said to have met an ill fate. Whether it was at their own hands, a mass execution or a pack of wild dogs, the diamonds seemed to have placed a curse on any and everyone who got near it. In 1958, it was fortunately donated to the Smithsonian Museum and has been safe there ever since. I wonder if it got moved from the museum if the curse would continue. Do cursed items ever, like, retire? In our number six spot today, we have the Dibbuk box. The box, which was originally just a plain old wine box, is said to have been possessed by a Dibbuk, which in Jewish mythology is a malicious demon. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived the Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of darker hair bound with a cord as well. 
well. A small statue that was engraved, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. Since he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening, such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box, and when he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift, she suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan, who is a paranormal investigator, and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. So. I don't know what you want to do with that information. In our number 5 spot today we have Robert the doll. Annabelle gets a lot of attention for being a haunted doll, but Robert is just as terrifying. Swear to god guys, the door just opened on its own. Robert the doll's trying to come in right now. Robert the doll was a childhood birthday gift from a grandfather to his grandson, who is also named Robert, but more often went by Jean. The story claims that while growing up with Robert, Jean would often be heard by his parents in his bedroom having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. His parents would sometimes be woken up in the middle of the night to the sound of Jean screaming, only to find him completely frightened in bed with overturned furniture around him. Jean would blame Robert for all of the strange happenings and at the time no one really believed him. Jean kept Robert into adulthood and it became what people would describe as an unhealthy relationship. Apparently Jean took Robert everywhere with him and spoke as if he was a living entity rather than a doll. Okay, this story is already not great, but surprisingly it gets worse. Jean lived in a house as an adult that was called the artist's house. Robert would be left in the upstairs window where children in the area reported seeing the doll disappear and reappear and they all chose to just stay clear of the house. After Jean passed away in 1974, a woman named Myrtle purchased the house and apparently Robert as well. Visitors of the house could swear they could hear footsteps and giggling coming from the attic where Robert was, and some even claimed to see the doll's expression change if someone spoke poorly of Jean. Myrtle reported Robert moving around the house on his own, and after 20 years she decided that she had had enough and donated him to a museum. Robert still lives in the museum where he is safely locked up, but it is said that he still likes to place a little curse on those who take his photo without permission. The walls of the museum near Robert's glass case are riddled with notes from previous visitors and naysayers who are begging Robert for his forgiveness and asking him to remove any curse he has placed on them. In our number 4 spot today we have the Koh Noor Diamond. This diamond has an extremely controversial history and it is the source of a lot of debate, but regardless of the ongoing conversations over who really owns it, we are here to talk about the curse that this stone is said to hold. This diamond dates back thousands of years and its curse is said to only affect men. It is said that the jewel can bring about great wealth, but it can also bring great misfortune as well to those who own it. Folklore states that, quote, he who owns this diamond will own the world, but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. Throughout the history of the diamond, it was passed among many people and rulers who all fought bloody battles while in possession of it. Every prince who had it is said to have ultimately either lost their power or their life while in possession of it as well. Part of the controversy of the diamond is how it ended up in the hands of the British royal family during colonization in the 1800s. Ever since then it has only been worn by female monarchs including Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. The diamond now resides in the crown of the Queen Mother and is on display in the jewel house at the Tower of London. In our number 3 spot today we have the dark Mirror. The Dark Mirror now belongs to the Travelling Museum of the Occult, who got it from the mirror's original owner. The mirror is said to show some pretty upsetting images when you stare into it. The original owner said that they purchased it from a psychic fair in the Columbus area and were shocked with the visions they saw when looking into the dark glass. Visitors to the Travelling Museum have claimed to see things such as their own corpse when they gaze into the mirror. I don't know, pretty creepy stuff. Look if you dare. In our number 2 spot today we have the Great Bed of Ware. I definitely wouldn't necessarily expect to see a bed as I waltz through a museum, but the Bed of Ware is actually one of the Victoria and Albert Museum's biggest attractions. This lavishly decorated bed is said to have been built in the 15th century for King Edward IV by a carpenter named Jonas Fosbrook. After a while it is said that this bed began to be passed between the inns of Ware, which led to more common folk being able to get their shut eye in this 
elaborate bed. Here's where the tale turns. It is said that once more people began sleeping in this bed, they also began covering it in graffiti and carvings. Apparently, this disrespect for what was said to have once been a regal item angered the ghost of the man who made it. This is where the curse comes into play. It is now said that anyone who dare try and sleep in the bed, unless you're a noble of course, will be attacked by the ghost of Fosbrook. He makes it his business to ensure that the bed only sees visitors who are fit for it. In our number one spot today, we have Old Nick. Old Nick is often referred to as the Swansea Devil, and his story dates back to the 1890s, although he now resides in the Swansea Museum. So, back in the 1890s, there was the prestigious St. Mary's Church located right in the center of town. The church decided to do some renovations, and they put out some ads to hire someone. When a local builder applied for the job and was turned down, he had a major overreaction and decided he wanted to get some kind of revenge. He went and bought the row of cottages that lay next to the church and then demolished them all. In their place, he built large brick offices and then he commissioned the carving of Old Nick and placed him right on top of the office building looking down at St. Mary's Church. Legend goes that he even placed the curse himself by saying, quote, when your church is destroyed and burnt to the ground, my devil will remain laughing. Some years later, during World War II, a German blitz came through the town and it left most of the town, including St. Mary's, completely destroyed and burnt to the ground. But the office building with Old Nick was undamaged and remained standing. For a while, Old Nick seemed to kind of disappear, but once he resurfaced, there was a petition to put him back to where he was before, as well as a subsequent counter petition to put him far, far away from the rebuilt St. Mary's Church. As of now, Old Nick resides behind glass in the Swansea Museum, and it is said that he is enclosed in glass more for our protection than his. Coming into number five, we have the Summoning Mirror. Ah, uh, a classic haunted mirror. Mirrors have long been associated with the spirit world. Indeed, legends like Candyman and Bloody Mary seem to suggest that spirits can be summoned from paranormal planes using a mirror. This isn't just any mirror at the occult museum. Of course it isn't. This is a special conjuring mirror used to bring forth spirits and demons. The only thing is though, you don't know if what answers your call will be a good spirit or a bad spirit. To me, I have to say, the mirror is pretty beautiful and lavish, like I'd like that in my bedroom. Although, maybe without the side of spirits popping up. They can stay out. Coming into number four, we have the haunted organ. Who this organ belongs to? We simply don't know. But according to the occult museum, it starts playing itself at random intervals. Ooh. It is thought that the organ is haunted by a particularly musical spirit and that the instrument provides a macabre soundtrack to the witching hour at the museum. On top of the organ sits all kinds of other creepy stuff, a sign which reads restless spirit, a hand holding a small ball, a bust of a child, a big frog, a selection of spooky owls. Honestly, wonder how the organ feels about all the clutter. Marie Kondo needs to like get in, sort it out. Coming into number three, we have a brick from the most haunted house in England. Ah. The story of the Borley Rectory is actually pretty chilling. The building was constructed in 1862 in Victorian times in Essex, and rumours of its haunting were rife from the very beginning. The building was severely damaged by a fire in 1939. Ghost hunters claim the activity is related to a Benedictine monastery built in the area in 1362. A monk was said to have been executed, and a nun bricked alive in the walls of the convent after the pair had an affair. It is thought that the nun and the monk haunt the grounds and had a hand in the fire that tore through the rectory building on the site. Before the fire, it was said the owners of the house had found human bones on the property and experienced poltergeist activity. Despite the fire rendering the building inhabitable, hauntings in the ruins continue. Now, of course, good old Ed and Lorraine had to go for a jaunt there, and they took a token back to the museum with them, a brick from the ruins. Was it one of the bricks that was used to keep the nun in the wall? Does it carry any of the bad energy from its horrible history? Like, possibly. Coming into number two, we have the Wood Dweller. Ugh, the story behind this object honestly fills me with fear. So the story goes that the satanic idol was found in the woods by a guy who was out hunting. The man said that he walked up to the doll and had a horrible feeling. All of his energy was just drained and he said he was filled with dread. Ugh. He said he turned away from the idol and then he saw a man wearing a black cloak walking in step opposite to him. It seemed that the horned idol is used for satanic rituals for summoning evil spirits. The man did make his way out of the forest and told the Warrens about the idol. Of course, 
Ed and Lorraine went to seek it. Lorraine Warren was particularly affected by the piece and said that one of the demonic spirits inside the idol sent her into a catatonic state for days. She even claimed it made her levitate. Does this sound like something should be on display to the public? To me? No, no. Put it away. Okay, this needs to be put away. It freaked me out harder than Annabelle, and I don't know who's gonna make a movie about this, but they should. We have the heart stopping shadow doll at number one. Let's have a look at this shadow doll, shall we? Ah! Honestly, my eyes. Take it away. This doll is said to have been created by black magic and is comprised of human and animal bones. Hip hip hurrah. The life size doll is labelled as a doll of shadows and hexes, and if you ever visit the museum, you should be careful not to look the doll in the eye, for it seems that it has the ability to visit you in your nightmares, giving you a fright so hard you could have a heart attack. Apparently, even so much as photographing this doll could expose you to its hex, so be careful. The Warrens say that the doll was given to them by a couple who found it in an antique store. I know, right? Who wouldn't look at this doll and think, what a beautiful vintage piece worth taking home? Obviously, just ignoring the warning signs of the doll's demonic fashion sense and the soul sucky open mouth and the gormless eyes. Yep, the couple took it home and began experiencing terrible sleep paralysis and nightmares, and at this point, I'm thinking, who do they have to blame but themselves? The husband even woke up with scratches on his back. Who do you gift a horrible demonic doll to? The Warrens, of course. Starting off this countdown, we have the Psychiatric Patient. Over at the Glore Psychiatric Museum in St. Joseph, Missouri is a display of a bunch of weird random objects. You wouldn't think anything of them until you read the caption. These objects were all found inside of a woman's stomach. Yes, this woman suffered from pica. Pika is a condition that causes individuals to crave and eat unusual non-food items. These items may include paper, wood, feces, paint, dirt, and rocks. It is thought that those with Pika have an iron or zinc deficiency. There were 1,446 items taken from this woman's stomach, and all of them are on display. These objects include buttons, safety pins, nails, and sewing needles. In our ninth spot, we have the tapeworm. At the Magiro Parasitological Museum in Tokyo, Japan, you will find the world's largest tapeworm. This tapeworm is about 28.8 feet long, and scary enough, it was extracted from a man's intestinal tract. He got the tapeworm after eating trout sushi. So, if you get a tapeworm, it attaches to the inner walls of your intestines where it feeds off the food being digested. Just look at the size of this thing. That was inside someone's body. That is gross. It is said that this tapeworm started off small and then eventually grew that big inside of him. <sighs> so if you have a strong enough stomach, then you can view this insect along with 45,000 other real life parasites at this museum. Moving on to number seven, we have the Mer Monkey. To combat boredom and isolation, a UK museum went to Twitter and asked museums to share a creepy piece from their exhibits. That's when the National Museums of Scotland responded, attaching a photo of what they call Scotland's original mermaid. Basically, it's an object that was purposely made to look quite odd. It features a taxidermy monkey with the lower half of a fish sewn onto its torso. But the monkey is shown to be completely hairless, making it that much more terrifying. On top of that, its teeth are rotting and some have been even replaced with fish teeth. It's a very, very creepy design. Like, who came up with this thing? And let's hope that it's fake and not an actual creature. In our sixth spot, we have the executioner. So, I don't know what's more terrifying, being executed or encountering an executioner wearing this terrifying looking mask. So this mask was said to have been worn by executioners in the 19th century. It is made out of three iron plates and features two circular eye holes and the worst part? A terrifying, lopsided grin. It honestly looks like they try to make it look friendly, but then it just went terribly wrong. Now, others have theorized that it wasn't an executioner's mask, but instead it's a school's bridal. Basically, women were forced to wear this as a form of punishment for behaving immodest or rude. It's meant to inflict pain on the person while simultaneously causing public humiliation. Either way, it's terrifying and I would never want to encounter anyone wearing it. But if you want to see this mask along with an axe and a guillotine block, it's located in the Tower of London. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the creeping baby. If you're easily terrified with dolls, then maybe just look away for a second. 
So this doll was created in 1871 by a man named George P. Clark. It's currently on display in the Smithsonian Museum. He wanted to make a doll that imitates human life. In this case, he wanted the doll to crawl exactly how a baby does. So the doll's head, arms, and legs were made out of painted plaster. From there, they were hinged onto a brass clockwork body. The doll then moves forward by rolling along on two toothed wheels. But honestly, it just looks like a scary robot baby. So not only is this doll terrifying to look at, but it can slowly creep along like a baby. Yeah, no thanks. All I need is waking up in the middle of the night to that doll crawling along my floor. 